Hey, welcome back. Um, I did one earlier uh, talk about uh, oh, there's talk about uh, uh, companies laying people off and pretty much uh, talking up MMT's version of a job, uh, just job, uh, sorry, um, a just transitional uh, program as far as job wise. Um, yeah, I'm not sure I'm saying that right, but anyway, point being is um, that was then I was going to uh, do like a Zoom version of you know taping of the of yesterday's um, uh, Democratic uh, protest of the uh, overturning of Roe Ro v. Wade, but I didn't think that the audio would be very good, uh, so I will let that slide, and hopefully next time. That the next protest, which will be January, not January, excuse me, July 4th, um, hopefully they will not be playing any copyrighted material. Otherwise, I'd have to wait until speeches or whatever else. Um, anyway, so apparently Russia has been quite literally pushed into default. Meaning they had the money, they had the cash flow, they had, you know, all the means and ways to pay uh, interest on U.S. foreign debt, but U.S. Didn't, wouldn't accept it, pushing them into default. And so I was looking at this, I'm like, okay, I can see MMT criticisms about sovereign currency and all that other stuff. That was a policy. Um directive uh i believe uh that uh the fed and the treasury chose not to accept uh those payments uh so it's not you know anything against monetary theory is literally that was a policy choice and that's what they that's what that that's what they, the united states wanted to do they wanted to force russia which is a sovereign currency nation into a default and apparently it hasn't gone into defaults in 1918 um but because one of the one of the crucial things about monetary theory is in order to make uh, your currency um a sovereign currency is you can't have any outside debt you know you can't have a you can't have a, a borrowed from another uh, uh, currency state like they did uh, when they I guess when they borrowed from I guess is before it become a sovereign currency state or a currency country they borrowed um, money I guess to get themselves back up um, after the fall of, so of the Soviet Union so back in from the 90s um, they've had this debt but um, they borrowed in U.S. dollar, but they obviously they borrowed in U.S. dollar and exchanged it for uh, Russian rubles. Um, and because of that part, they did have outside the currency debt, just like Argentina, just like, uh, I guess, Argentina uh, 2012 or 2017 and 2001. Hopefully, they took Warren Moser's advice and are doing what he said they should do. Um, Best way is the same thing. They defaulted on, again, all this is literally denominated in foreign currency. If you are a country that has their own currency, do not peg your currency to any other currency. Because that, in my view, and it looks like it's been true, uh, devalues your currency because you have to go on the money market and transfer you know exchange your currency for the for the foreign currency your currency is pegged that to i guess make your currency at that uh level of uh value i mean that part i'm not i'm not too sure about but anyway point being is let's see let's see according to this is cnn obviously i don't trust them a lot as far as different uh, types of news but this one sure why not uh, Russia has defaulted on its foreign debt for the first time since the Bolshevik Revolution more than a century ago. Uh, following reports in Moscow that Moscow has failed to pay about 100 million in interest on two bonds 
during a 30-day grace period that expired Sunday. The White House said the default showed the power of Western sanctions imposed on Russia since it invaded Ukraine. Just means that you want to accept payment. That's all it means. Uh, this morning, news around the uh, around the finding of Russia's default for the first time in more than a century uh, situates just how strong the reactions are that U.S. along with allies and partners have taken, as well as uh, uh, have taken, as well as how dramatic the impact has been on Russia's economy. A senior administration official sit on the sidelines of a G7 summit in Germany. Russia denied it was in default, saying the payments had been made in dollars and euros on the May 27th, and the money was stuck with Euroclear, a settlement house based in Belgium. That might be that might be fucking true when we don't know until news breaks later on when if it's true or not. But I mean in that regard, I don't see Russia having any reason to lie. Um the historic default, I can't call it a default yet until I know more, uh, have been widely anticipated after uh, half after half Russian's foreign reserves were frozen. Uh, maybe I should say half of uh, Russian foreign reserves were frozen and U.S. Treasury ended a carve out from sanctions that had allowed U.S. bondholders to be repaid by Russia. So... They had the money. They wanted to pay. They they tried to pay. Uh, the the European Union also made it harder to, for Moscow to meet in debt obligations earlier this month by sanctioning Russia's national settlement depository, the country's agent for its foreign currency bonds. Still, it took longer than many had expected. Sanctions have largely failed to cripple. Russia's economy as surging energy prices have padded the country's coffers. Meanwhile, Russia's currency has soared to a seven-year high against the U.S. dollar. The country managed to pay back creditors with dollars in April after a long saga that put it on the brink of default. The country's finance minister said in April that it made a $565 million euro bond that was due this year, as well as a 4 million euro bond that was set to mature in 2024. Both payments were made in U.S. dollars, the finance minister claimed, as required by bonds contract up st stipulations. Now, here's the interesting thing about it. If they could, if they had the receipts for those things, then they can freaking prove it, which... All this is making the U.S. look fucking horrible, at least in my eye, because that I this case they they are sabot trying to sabotage a uh, economy based on sanctions that may or may not have you know may or may not should have been put on them. I mean, last I checked, the only parts of Ukraine they have attacked are the border cities. The border cities, which last I checked also was dominated and managed and terrorized by <clears throat> separatist parties. Now, separatist parties, as far as I know of, in this case are neo-Nazis who, uh, who have terrorized people who live there, who have uh, demanded that, that they have their own independence from Ukraine, apparently. And Russia, before the whole thing started, last I checked, and that could be wrong, but last I checked, uh, you, uh, Russia unanimously said, "Okay, fine. You want to be your own. You, you want to be your own thing. Cool." And because that's what they, because that's what those separatists were asking for was for countries to acknowledge them as a separate country away from Ukraine. Now, again, this is as far as I know of. Um, point being is. Ukraine has been getting lots and lots and lots of help from our government, whether it be in cash, uh, whether it be in weapons, manpower, uh, whatever the case may be. So Ukraine has gotten everything in need of regards to this whole thing, and yet they get their butts had to marry fucking time. That, and again, if Russia has not uh, tried to uh, go into beyond the border towns, that means that they're doing exactly what they said they were trying to do, and that was to 
quote unquote liberate the Russian uh, citizens there. If that's the case, and if it's proven to be so at some point in the future, then that means that the U.S. has been fucking up royally, like the usual interventionism. Anyway, so let's see. Da, da, da. The Russian finance minister said in a telegram post on May 27th that the Russian National Settlement Depository had made the required payments of 71 million and 26.5 million. Uh, allegations of default are incorrect because necessary currency payments was made as early as early as back in May. Kremlin's spokesman Dmitry Peskov said during a regular call with reporters on Monday. The fact that money transferred to Euroclear was not delivered to investors was not our problem, he said. So there are grounds to call it. A, so there are no grounds to call it a default. Now, if what he says is true and is stuck at Euroclear, that does mean Euroclear, as far as I know about, was told not to pay. And if that's the case, that is Milliman sabotage. But I, again, I don't know for a fact. Anyway. Okay, so let's see. Euroclear can't settle any securities with counterparties that are subject to sanctions. Uh, since 2014, the last time the West, the time the West sanctioned Russia over its annexation of Crimea, the Kremlin had built up about 640 billion in foreign reserves. About half of those funds are now frozen under Western sanctions imposed after the invasion of Ukraine. And it's not clear what effect, if any, the default would have on Russia's economy in the near term as the country is already unable to borrow abroad and the existing bonds have collapsed in value to pennies on the dollar. But in the long term, Russia will almost certainly suffer. The country's assault on Ukraine has left it with a few friends in the international community and the default will likely cut off access to foreign finance, financing for years. If you're a sovereign currency and you trade with other countries in their currency, that means that you are literally just buying their currency so you can pay them. So that means that you're paying, your, you, you are exchanging your currency for their currency so that when you purchase with them, you give them their own currency. That's what that means. That's not financing as far as, far as I'm concerned. That's like if I were to buy, be, uh, Buying something for the Philippines. I'm sending them money, but I'm sending the money in their currency, in their peso. But it's being exchanged from US dollar. So that's not financing, that's just purchasing within that country's uh, own currency. Anyway, learn MMT. Uh, that's pretty much what I wanted to say as far as I'll park out. Let me see if there's anything else. Uh, uh, Yes, no, maybe not that one. No. I think I heard something about, oh, hold on. I'm to find something, hold on. I just have a small little comment to make on the story. I haven't read it yet, but just by, uh, the uh, the title of uh, Clarence Thomas says American citizens are seemingly more interested in their iPhones than their Constitution uh, book. Well, here's the thing. Uh, iPhones has the internet. They can look it up. They don't need a book for it. That's all I want to say as far as the part goes. But there was another one that was re referencing the uh, opioids or whatever the case may be. Let's see. That's how I found it, but apparently I didn't. Uh, pause this one more time so I can start to find it. Which I... Okay, what I'm going to try to do is do like a little preview of sorts uh, of uh, macro and cheese. And I'm going to see this will work. Bear with me. Okay, so this is L. Randall Ray. He is referring to inflation, the Fed's uh, crash landing with L. Randall Ray, as I said. So let's see. Break free, if 
wages are growing slower than inflation, wages can't push inflation up. So patience still would have been the best strategy is my point. There's no reason to kill the economy in order to fight inflation that is caused on the supply side. In our paper, we actually have a graph of the capacity utilization rate for the economy as a whole. We're only at 75% of capacity. We used to reach 95% of capacity when the economy was booming along. So we got 20 points more to go. What I have said is that this campaign is not just about electing a president, it is about making a political revolution. MMT. Taking money from our children and borrowing from China. People are dying. Is the program so critical it's worth borrowing money from China to pay for it? And if not, I'll get rid of it. Stop lying! I want the truth. I just wanted to play a little bit of that. Uh, let's see. <laughs> uh, oh, man. Mm, let's see. This is also from uh, Jimmy Inflation and Robert uh, Hockett. The executives are chortling about the fact that they're able to mark up prices right now under cover of inflation, right? That they're using, in other words, inflation as a pretext or as a convenient handy-dandy explanation to go ahead and raise prices even though factor costs aren't appreciably rising. With respect to jump-starting green production and greenification, we can do it, and we can do it really fast, but people have to understand how serious the problem is, and they have to be reminded of the how-tos, I think. Okay, I just wanted to try that out and see if it works. If so, then I will be continuing to do that, and, and the forthcoming uh, episodes is... Uh, Basically, just putting up um, previews of mac, um, uh, mac and cheese, or macro, uh, macro and cheese, and let's see, uh, Rob Scholar, Steve Grumbine, and Rob Scholar. Let's see, let's see, this works or not. All right, everybody, it is Steve, the Rogue Scholar, a special Saturday evening edition, just because that's the time I had available, right? But I wasn't probably even going to go live today until I got a message from a friend, a uh, longtime supporter, longtime friend, who said, I want you to take a look at a Chris Hedges article that he wrote basically today. It was from his sub stack. And, uh, you know, I, I, I've always revered Chris Hedges. He's always been a guy who I felt like, you know, he was always kind of like a dark angel, if you will. He always gave the the truth, the unvarnished truth. Um, but one thing is that Chris Hedges is absolutely not an economist. And for all the good he does when it comes to discussing uh, war, and other things, he always seems to find a way to try to insert economic discussions into his pieces. And I would love that if he actually understood the economics he was putting out there. He's very similar to Richard Wolff. He's a person within our leftist movement that we all know, we all love, but gets it terribly wrong. Terribly. Okay, so check out more. Right here. Uh, what is in the description below? Uh, but yeah, anyway. 
Uh, thanks for watching. I had to, I wanted to basically just uh, share my thoughts on the whole quote unquote default that Russia had done, which was uh, a US policy based default and not that they didn't have the money for it. Uh, because again, what makes a sovereign uh, country a sovereign currency country is it, it's an uh, ability to uh, create, manage, and uh, control their own currency uh, to be able to um, to be able to pay whomever they need to uh, for trade, both internationally and domestically. And uh, it's uh, the new money which is produced by legislative um, means, in our case, the uh, Congress and the House. Um, Congress distributes the money, both House and Congress make up the bills and so on and so forth. And the president signs it. Um, and another part that makes a country a sovereign country, it doesn't, it doesn't have, it is accrued outside currency debt. It doesn't owe money to outside currencies uh, like the Argentina, like uh, Venezuela, like, you know, pretty much any country that, um, that needs to take out literal loans to keep itself sustainable because it doesn't know how to not trade their currency uh, for another currency and use that same currency within their uh, economic system or their uh, as a way of exchange. Um, United States is not that way. United States is a sovereign currency. UK, sovereign currency. Canada, sovereign currency. Japan, uh, common currency. Uh, currency, sorry, currency. Uh, China, sovereign currency. Uh, those two, the last two I just mentioned, um, they have roughly $3 trillion in U.S. Treasuries. Uh, we do not borrow the money. That is literally the same as account. If you look at, if you go to the federal, uh, uh, if you look up uh, federal daily treasury report or just the Fed, the, the Fed daily treasury, um, it or statement, sorry, federal daily statement, uh, it'll show you uh, the amount of money that has been redeemed, cashed out U.S. U.S. Treasuries, uh, and it will also say that uh, the U.S. Uh, government has its own treasury that it uh, puts money into, and that has in itself an interest, uh, an interest-bearing uh, U.S. Treasury, meaning every six months uh, the treasury pays interest on it. Um, so that's what that is. Uh, is is all literally savings and stuff of that nature. Um, it does business with only for uh, with, with only us and for foreign governments, but it does not uh, borrow money from other countries. There's no need for it if we are able to create our own money. Uh, Jerome Powell has said we, we could do that. Alan Greenspan has has been has said that we could do that. Ben Bernanke has said we could do that. Only people who have said that we can't do that are the same people who are trying to keep control of how the money is spent. The Senate, both Republicans and Democrats alike, um, because they want to keep the power amongst themselves. And they don't want to have to sit there and um take directives from the constituents they only want to take directives from the people who pay them as far as their um, their campaign contributions super PAC contributions stuff like that uh, and also uh their own personal uh investments uh joe manchin is one of them i and a lot of times i'll, I'll talk about him in regards to that and because his family himself are involved in the coal gas and oil and guess what? He is the chairman of the same uh, uh, of the committee that regulates them. So that in itself is built in a uh, conflict of interest. But because a lot of people, Chuck Schumer being one of them, uh, in the Senate, uh, Pelosi in the House, uh, they all don't want us to have any kind of power except for when they, when they need our vote. 
and they have uh, they have come to a conclusion that they can control the amount of voting by sometimes purging, depending on who's running, as we've noticed in 2016 of Bernie Sanders. And given the fact that DNC went to the court, I'm kind of going on an tangent here, but it kind of go, it kind of plays within the same lines I'm trying to I'm trying to draw here. Uh, has stated that since they are a private corporation, they have the sole right to decide who is their candidate, meaning we don't decide. We may not decide at a federal level, but as far as I know about, we do, we can decide at a local level. And so that's the reason why I re-registered, as I pointed out earlier on the, uh, my earlier show, that I have re-registered myself in Ohio just to, just to have that option. I don't want to sit there and like, oh, okay. Uh, there's a person who is fluent in MMT and knows about and knows about uh, financing, uh, government financing that is, and knowing that you know the only thing that is keeping us from spending the money we need to spend as far as the Green New Deal, Medicare for all other things, is the natural resources and the and the spending capacity within the economy manufacturing stuff like that uh as far, last i checked manufacturing we were at 59 percent of manufacturing we used to be at 90 95 percent of manufacturing so if we got back to 95 percent the industries that we could be having in this country are solar wind uh renewables those sort of things and there are some gas and oil companies that are leaning in that direction because they because they see the investment potential which is good. The problem is we don't want them to be the sole proprietors of the of those investments because then that means that they can control it whenever narrative they want in regards to you know propaganda and how they do uh, the how, how they accomplish it. So we need definite uh, smaller businesses that have the capability um, to do it. Uh, that's what we need. We don't need these bigger conglomerates to do it because they'll and they monopolize it. It's like Kroger and then like that monopolize groceries right now. It's like Exxon and Chevron and all, and all, those, all those other um, gas and oil companies that monopolize the prices of gas and oil here in the United States, not internationally. That would be Saudi Arabia, who owes about seven percent of the of the uh, of the gas supply gas and oil supply in the in the world um and because they don't want to make because they keep pushing up the prices and we keep selling our shit overseas we're going to keep uh uh paying higher prices either way unless uh in my judgment they take away a lot of the taxes involved in importing the gas or uh yeah gas Anyway, that's pretty much what I had to say right now. Uh, thanks for listening. Uh, thanks for putting out with me as far as this part goes. But the the things you have um, you have uh, watched and listened to support that. Support realprogressive.org. dot uh, And again, every time you see this, look this up and look up what a sovereign country can do. We're only, we're only constrained by legislation and by natural resources that we already have. Anyways, thanks for watching. Peace out for now. I'll be back on tomorrow.